Is OLED bright enough in 2024? Samsung says yes at CES 2024. Let's check it out. Today's video is brought to you by WhoKeys. Trying to build a PC on a budget but don't know where to buy your Windows 10 software on the cheap? WhoKeys to the rescue! Use my code SF20 and immediate discount. At the bottom of this order where it says code card, to the right is the product key you need to activate Windows. So copy this long number, then go to the Windows menu and click on settings. In the settings menu at the bottom, select update and security. Select activation, then select change product key, paste what you copied from WhoKeys, click next, click activate, and you're done. You can download a copy of Windows 11 Pro with my discount code SF20 and QD Quantum Dots was awarded the Nobel Prize in chemistry. So there are two new things that we have added in 2024. One is the what we call the QE or quantum enhancer, which is our AI-driven um, driving uh, logic that is in the TCOM that has been completely rehauled. And the other one is our Pico inkjet printing process. As you know, QD OLED uses quantum dots printed. So the red and green quantum dots are printed, and the blue has just some kind of a like pass-through material because the blue light can basically is passed through, but just to kind of meet the motion waveform of quantum dots, we have some material there. And now you can see the benefit of quantum enhancer. So here is the 2023 QD OLED compared to the 2024 QD OLED that is capable of 3000 nits on extreme peaks, so 3%, and 300 nits uh, at the full white. So 3000 nits, extreme peaks of 3%. 3% is very large. Yes, on a 77 or 65. Yeah. So we talked about this before is if you increase brightness, you might jeopardize lifetime. How did you solve for the, the Absolutely. lifetime? So one of the ways what differentiates QD OLED from a traditional uh, OLED is the fact that the way a traditional OLED is driving brightness is by increasing the kind of the power, the circuitry. The way we have improved the quantum enhancer, so for, to kind of enable this quantum enhancer, we took our kind of new material that we developed last year. Oh, right that, there. You see, there. right there. That blue is just... Yeah. And what the quantum enhancer allows us to do is by having 
finer capabilities of driving each pixel. So we're actually increasing the luminance without actually increasing the power consumption. So we're not overdriving the circuit to increase the 3,000 nits. It is just with the software and the logic upgrade that we're able to do that. That purple on the bottom, you can see it's very much brighter. Yeah, and we'll see an example of, your, of the question you asked right there. I'm loving the blue because you, you really made that blue brighter. It's yeah. really hard to do. I think Brian's gonna have to buy another TV this year. You saw the difference, right? Yeah, I mean. Ah, FOMO! The way the traditional OLED actually increases luminance is by overdriving these kind of bright seats. You can see that one, it's actually overdriving, so you can see quickly, mm -hmm. how quickly the temperature. That's why you have the heat sink, right? Right. But even with the heat sink, uh, you will see that the temperature is going to increase very... And that's why ABL has to control that, right? right? So here you have higher color volume as well, but it's unable to actually meet these vivid colors because in order to try to increase the luminance, there's a color washout because of the white suffix. Look at the warmth. Notice the temperature here as opposed to there. It's okay. almost 70 Celsius. Does it still have a different it have a different heat sink than last year as well? No, it still has the same heat sink. It's just with the quantum enhancer, we're able to drive it, but not by increasing the power, but by having better efficiency. So same power, but more light is coming light out. What right. mechanism improved the efficiency? So that's driven by the quantum enhancer AI. Ah, okay, so, so this is purely on the software side. Right, how does how the software drives each pixel? Is this on all sizes? Yes. So all your 2024... 24 will have the new... So the 30-something, the 49, the 55, 65, and 77. Right. And when you say it's a 2024 or Gen 3 model, you've already sent it to TV makers to consider. So they could use it for this year. Do they have to right. wait until so next year? That's a brand, I mean, they could, brand. right, right. Yes, but, but you made it available. Yes. I'm excited. Oh yeah, the camera could really see the after image. Right. Oh wow, that red is just <laughs> <it's> awesome. <clears throat> The other thing is that as the traditional OLED tries to, when you have a small bright area, you'll see that it tries to over brighten when you have the complete. Yes, I, that's been a problem. As opposed to on the key OLED, it's more consistent and uniform image. Very impressive. Both these displays have been mapped to the same luminance. Okay. You see that the higher prominence of the QD OLED is perceived to be brighter because of the more pure reds that the QD OLED can produce. And this is linked with the XCR or the experience color range standard that we've been talking about. So when you look at an overall color performance across all the three axes of color performance, there is, you know, better saturation. Because the 3000 would be made of R plus G plus B. So the biggest difference between QD OLED 2024 and last year is the light, the peak luminance output. The peak luminance and, uh, yeah. Does that also apply to the color luminance as well or just peak right. white luminance? Well, the peak white luminance in our case is R, G plus B. Okay, no so, so it is everything. It brings everything up. Because I know on the conventional, white goes up, but everything stays the same. Right, so, exactly. Okay. So you don't dilute at the higher, I mean, it right. goes together. Yes. That's amazing, okay. And then one of the concerns, or not concerns, but I would say, what we want to further read is that it's not just more color, it's also accurate color. So QD OLED is the first OLED to receive the Pantone certification. So Pantone has over 2,400 colors that have to be exactly matched. And we went through that very extensive testing. And these are the first panels that meet the high uh, certification standard of OLED, both for colors as well as skin tone validation. And you can see here, this is a Sony reference monitor and how closely the QD OLED can wow. mimic the performance of a reference grade 30,000 plus grading uh, monitor. And then here we have the new monitor lineup. 
So, so far you have the 49 inch and the 34 that provided not just gaming, but also content consumption mm -hmm. uh, with the wide aspect ratio. And then this year, we're launching the 27 inch QHD QD OLED and the 31.5 QD OLED, uh, that's 240 hertz, it's a UHD display. Uh, right now there's no other disc OLED which is a UHD display. And you will see that in a conventional OLED, when you have that fast um, refresh rate, it actually dims the response. Uh, it, the image looks a little dimmer. The QD OLED, you get the higher refresh rate without compromising on the actual uh, image quality. I noticed there was something announced a few months ago that you're using a new RGB pixel layout to help render text more clearly. Is that in 2024? Yes. So there are two things that help with that. Okay. One is that um, the layout is similar, but the design of the pixel is slightly changed. So it's more rectangular-ish. Mm -hmm. um, and the second thing is that with the higher PPI, by improving our manufacturing process using the Pico inkjet process, we're able to actually significantly reduce uh, the issues that the first generation had. And you'll, you, you can get close to it and you'll have a... And does that, see that improvement at all sizes or only the monitor size? The pixel improvement is across all of it, so you will see that. Okay. The higher PPI is right now on the 31.5 and the 27 QD. But all, all your panels this year benefit from this improvement? Yes. Okay. And then here's something you will really appreciate is that now we have, we launched the 55 inch QD OLED. This won the Hollywood Post Alliance yes. Award. And now we also have a 31.5 <coughs> professional QD OLED. So now we have two sizes. It's now, is this 55, the 2024? 20, 20, 23, it's, 23. It's, 23. 23, so yes. when they get to 24, that'll be even. Yes. Because this one's supposed to be pretty bright. So, yes. so they're just waiting to upgrade. That, Good thing I didn't next. get one yet then. <coughs> I'll have to I wait for them to upgrade. come first and then let's, uh, We'll see what Flanders. Oh, they're gonna have to. I mean, with 3,000 nits, like, oh! Right, right. I mean, it's not like if it's one or 200 nits, whatever, but it's an extra thousand. I mean, more than a thousand in terms of, I mean, that's just congratulations. Oh, normally, it's really impressive. I mean, normally we're seeing 10, 15%, but you guys went over 50%. That's very hard. As you know, for the first time, you now have a technology, the QD OLED platform that is available in the hands of the content creators, mm -hmm. hands of, you know, consumers. Mm -hmm. So you have the entire lineup that is now built on the same platform, yes. which will give further confidence to the content creators and to the consumers that they're getting the same content that was designed on the same kind of a panel technology. So speaking of content creator, did you catch Sony's announcement of 4,000 nits? <clears throat> on the BVM? Yes. Yes. You see my video that mentioned no. you specifically? Oh, okay. <laughs> because my video was Sony ends OLED because Sony's saying the future is 4,000 content and right now, even the best OLED, last year's QD OLED cannot exceed 2,000. We must go to Mini LED. So in the video I said, Shirag, I know you're watching this. When will, so you're at 3,000, so 4,000 is probably not that far off. And, and I know you're speculating, but are you working towards that? Because Sony is pushing for content creators to use their new BVM to hit 4,000 on a you know, two, three, four, five percent window. Now you have a new benchmark to work for. Is that something you guys are actively looking at? So on the monitors, it's 1,000 nits. Right. And then on the TVs, you can have the 3,000 nits, the 55. Uh, we're always looking to improve the performance, but we think at this point, this is going to be very well accepted by the, uh, you know, the Hollywood community. Okay. I like achieving it through efficiency. Here we're kind of showcasing that, you know, with the increased, uh, you know, here's an LCD, here's a QD OLED. Mm -hmm. You can see that even the top LCD, with the enhanced PPI, this is a 31.5 UHD display. So this is LCD or QD OLED? So this is LCD uh -huh. as a reference, like just to compare, mm -hmm. and this is QD OLED. Well, and even the product. stand is the same. Yes, so we just kind of mocked it up. Yeah, I can see the and black levels, the yes. contrast. Impressive. Oh, thank you. You guys thank do you. a lot. Are you done? We are done.